Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the sixth video in the LibGDX uh, Box 2D and Tile tutorial. <clears throat> so in this video, I'm going to be doing my resource manager and a couple of classes to get us started with sprites. I'm not going to do any actual sprites for this video. I know I said in the last video I would, but uh, there is just too much stuff to uh, prepare for. So I'm going to try to move that up to the next video. So yeah. I'm also going to do a little bit of cleanup towards the end of this video, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, um, someone mentioned that the jumping mechanic over here was wrong, and it is wrong. Um, so the way we have it right now is here, and the player can jump, and that works, but it all of a sudden stops working when you can move left and right. So just I guess I'll leave this as an exercise for you guys. Try to figure out why this is wrong and why this new method works. Instead of the boolean, I'm going to keep track of a counter of the number of fixtures that the foot is in contact with. And I'm going to increment that on begin and decrement it on end. So num foot contacts is the number of fixtures that the foot is in contact with. And the player is on the ground if there is at least one fixture that the foot is in contact with. So num foot contacts is greater than zero. So yeah, this should work now. Um, again, if you want to, try to figure it out why this works and why the previous one doesn't. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. The resource manager, I said, what we're going to do. So let's go ahead, create a new class. I'm just going to call this content. And I'm just going to use the same pattern I've been using for my other games, which is just a global hash map, pretty much. Um, private hash map uh, string texture. This is going to be a hash map for the textures. Let's go ahead and make the constructor over here. This is just textures is new hash map with string and texture type. Import those. If you don't know what a hash map is, you should probably read up on it. But it's basically like a sort of index lookup thing where you give it a string and then it should give you back the texture that it's associated with. So we need three methods. Load texture, uh, given a path, and given a key. We also need get texture, which returns the texture, given the key, and uh, dispose texture, given the key. So let's get started here. Um, first off, load texture. It's really simple. Texture text is equal to new texture. This is how you get textures, by the way. You just do new texture dot files dot internal, and then give it path to the texture or image file. And we're just going to add that to the textures hash map. Key using that value, text. All right. Get texture returns the texture from the hash map given that key, which is as easy as return textures.get key. And uh, let me move this down. Over here, dispose texture. Again, you just grab the texture from the hash map. Um, oh, what did I just press? Uh, that was weird. Textures dot get key and check first to make sure it's not null. Otherwise, you might get some null pointer exceptions. Um, text dot dispose. So that's it. That's my content manager. Um, I'm gonna have hash maps for other stuff like music and sound effects. But for now, let's get started with just the textures. And it's really easy to use. Just go back into game here and let's create a public static reference to it. I'm going to call it res for resources. Import. And I'm just going to start it up up here. Res is equal to new content. So let's test this thing out. Let's actually try to load up uh, one texture. What do we have here? Uh, res. Let's try loading up the bunny sprites over here. So Again, it's just res.load texture given a path, and the path is res slash images slash bunny.png. Give it a key or a name. I'll just call it bunny. 
And uh, let's see if this actually works. Let's try to draw that texture. Or let's grab the texture from the resource manager and try to draw it. So sb.set projection matrix. Uh, let's use the HUD cam. That combined. sb.begin. This is just a test. You don't have to copy this, by the way. So sb.draw. Let's draw it. Uh, we want to draw the texture. So that's res.getTexture with the key bunny. And just draw it at 0, 0. All right. Let's see. There it is. So there's the bunny texture at 0, 0. So it works. So now you can just grab textures whenever you want. Just load it up and then grab it with get texture. And then if you don't need it anymore, dispose of it with uh, load te uh, dispose texture. So that's pretty much it for my resource manager. Real simple to use. Um, let's go ahead and start working on some helper classes that we're going to be using for sprites. Uh, so handlers go into here. We're going to make a new class called animation. Now I know libgdx already has an animation class, but um, the thing that really bugs me about their animation class is that you have to keep track of your own like timer variable. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, at least that's the way I think it works. But whatever, I make my own uh, stuff anyway. So my own animation class is just pretty much uh, takes an array of texture regions and it gives you back the correct texture region uh, given like as it's going through the animation. So private float time, private float delay. Delay uh, time is the current time. Delay is how much time between each frame to move on to the next one. And current frame just keeps track of which frame we're currently on. Oh, we also need one more times played in case you ever want to, uh, you know, figure out how much a certain animation is played. If you only want something to play once, then you just check times times played is greater than or equal to zero or one. I mean. So, animation, empty constructor, uh, you really, I'm not sh sure about this, but uh, I'm just going to put that in there anyway. Texture region, frames, and, oops, public animation, texture region, uh, frames, float delay. So, a couple of constructors here. Let me move this down. Alright, so this one constructor is doesn't take any delay, so this is just going to call um, the other constructor and give it a default delay of 1 over 12. And uh, we're actually going to use a method to set up the <laughs> variables for the constructor, because that's pretty much, this method public void set frames is pretty much what the constructor does. Texture region frames float delay. So pretty much this is just gonna call that or just set frames. Frames delay. Same thing. Anyway, um so yeah, set frames. This dot frames is frames. Uh the time is gonna go to zero. This dot delay is delay. I forgot. Um current frame is gonna start out at the first one, so zero also and times played is zero. So pretty much just resets with a new animation, a new array of texture regions. Um, what else? Just update, right? Public void update float dt. This makes the animation move forward. Um, I make it, I made it so that if you set the delay as zero or less than that, um, that the animation doesn't move at all. So if the delay is less than or equal to zero, just return. Otherwise, add to the time. And while the time is greater than the delay, just move forward one step. And private void step here. Time minus equals delay. And move on to the next frame. And if we're at the end of the animation, just go back to the beginning, current frame is zero. And also, increment the amount of times played. So real simple stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and 
set up some uh, getters get texture region this is the important method get frame this just gets back the current sprite frame that you want so that's just return frames current frame uh and get times played of course return times played and that's pretty much it so a bunch of simple additions animation class content manager class um yeah so that's pretty much it i'm gonna use this animation class for the uh sprites but uh, i'm gonna do the sprites later again like i said in uh, another video so that's pretty much it for this, the last thing I'm going to do is just general cleanup because um, the play state is a little messy. So we're just going to clean all of this stuff up. Over here. So first off in the constructor, set up Box2D stuff. All that goes in there. Over here I'm going to do create player and I'm going to create, make a separate method for that. And then I'm going to do create tiles. And again, I'm going to create a oops, separate method for that. So separate methods for everything. I'm going to put them all at the bottom. Um, so one for create player, oops, and one for create tiles. All right. So pretty much create player is just going to be this right here. I'm just gonna copy and paste everything up to the foot sensor. So create player and create foot sensor. Copy that. Go back down here. Pop that in there. Alright. So yeah, that looks fine. Everything's more organized. And over here, create tiles. I'm just going to um grab first off this part over here load tile map all the way up to the tile size grab that and I'm gonna pop it down here like that so yeah and I'm going to create one more a helper method create layer given a tiled map tile layer call it layer and short bits for the bits that we're going to set for that layer. So um, in the previous video I showed you bit red, green, and blue. We're going to have to set those. So go back up to the constructor and here the for loop where we go through the layer. Just copy and paste that. Grab all of it and get rid of it. And put it down here in the create layer method. Ooh. I need to shift these back. Okay. That looks cool. Alright. Um, so yeah. We have a couple of things to uh, fix. First of all, body def. bdef is equal to new body def here. And uh, I'm sure I need a fixer def. fdef is equal to new fixer def here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And over here, create layer. First off, let's move this tile map to tile layer down here. So I'm going to set it like this, and I'm going to start. Layer is equal to tile map tile layer that get red. I'm also going to get one for the green and the blue layers. And I'm just going to call create layer for each one of these. Uh, layer. And I'm going to use for the red uh, blocks the red type and the green and the blue like that so yeah that's pretty much it um, the tile size uh, let's there's another way to actually get the tile size and um, it's uh, basically this. You use the properties, tilemap.get properties. Oops. Properties.get tile width. Um, I'm not sure why you have to go through the properties for that, but uh, whatever. 
So that's the uh, tile size, and then we got the layers. Load up the red layers, green layers, and blue layers. So let's see if that works. There we go. So we have box 2D bodies for the red blocks and the green blocks, and it's all it's all good. It's all fine. Um. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. And in the next video, we'll finally get started with the player and do the sprites for that. So um, just another recap, we did the uh, content manager here and all it is is a hash map of t that holds textures and you just load a texture from anywhere and then get the texture from anywhere and dispose. These are all pretty much just public stuff since in game it's a public static and you have a reference to the game from everywhere, even in the game states over here. You can do, um, for example, game.res, right there, game.res, dot get texture. Funny. Stuff like that. So, um, yeah, and we did the animation class, which is just uh, an array of texture regions, given a texture. So, um, for example, the bunny sprites over here. This would be a single texture and I would split it up into four texture regions, one for every sprite. And the animation class um, is going to have an array of each of these texture regions and uh, it just goes through, keeps track of the time and the delay and get frame is just gonna return the current frame that the animation is in or the correct texture region. So that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this video, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.